What lies ahead for the LA Kings? Yet again, we are a competitive team. Yet again, we have the goal of making it past the first round in the playoffs, but time will ultimately tell if we do. We're not off to as good of a start as we have been in the past. The division has caught up a little bit. It's a little bit more competitive than it had been over the past few seasons, so the challenge is that much greater. Don't mind me smashing my controller into my desk. Of course, the goals for this year, make it to the second round of the playoffs, winning record against the California teams, have the top line, hit a point per game. Thankfully, thus far, the top line is holding up their end of the bargain, thankfully. However, obviously someone like Rasmus Kapari, we want a little bit more out of him. Uh, this fourth line has been brutal. Brutal. Thankfully, the defense has been okay, but then goaltending-wise, while Carter Hart's been great, we have some major concerns about Itumaki Niemi. So what we're going to do is sim another month here before we make these drastic changes. We're not even a quarter of the way through the season. We're going to give some of these guys an opportunity. At least, you know, that's the plan. If we really struggle here, then that opportunity can be taken away. But we're going to give these guys an opportunity to kind of turn it around. You know, those featured players in particular, those spoken about, and the 7-2 win over the Dallas Stars is a pretty good way to start. But we're going to give them a little bit of time here to turn things around. Really good win against Minnesota as well. And hopefully, you know, things will just kind of sort itself out without us having to uh, resort to making a trade. We finally lose a game for the first time this month. Follow that up with a shootout loss to Montreal. Won't be three losses in a row, which is really good news. Now, Alexia Fallo goes down for the rest of the month with a foot injury. On the day that we beat the St. Louis Blues 9-2, to we do beat Arizona as well. Iafalo is back. So we lose to the Ducks and lose to the Hurricanes because the Sim didn't want to stop. So Iafalo sits out a game that he's not supposed to set out of. Unfortunately, uh, for whatever reason, we can just not do well against the California teams. Uh, last I knew, Anaheim's record was terrible. It is. Uh, yet we're 0-2 against them, and now 0-1 against the San Jose Sharks. So that is not ideal. But overall, a very strong month for us. We move into January at 25, 11, and 5. So those 5 pity points help out quite a bit. But as you can see, a game at hand for the Sharks. They are also one point clear. So a bit of competition at the top, unlike last year where we we did quite well. So Genther, 37 points, 31 games. You know, spectacular. Turcotte, spectacular. Matthew Savoy, spectacular. Carl Grundstrom has been great. Kapari stepped up. Kapari stepped up in a big time way. That's much better. 39 points at the midway point of the season. Rick Van Kattishen, 2020. Pretty good. <clears throat> Pretty good from the 22-year-old. We're going to leave him there. Nikolai Prohorkin has been in the lineup because of the Iafalo injury, and he has been great when given the opportunity to play. But obviously we'll get Alex back in there now, who has been solid. Aaron Nissen Dolan's been fine. Madden's been fine. Defensively, oof, Anze. Like, I know we have you play in a role that, you know... It, it doesn't suit you tremendously. Obviously, like, you have more to give. Maybe changing him to a two-way and giving up the plus five is a good way to go. Because Luff has at least sorted it out defensively. Maybe we don't exactly need a grind line. Like, Austin Wagner's a good grinder, though, with that physicality. And so is Matt Luff. I mean, you could talk about Luff potentially even being a power forward. But I think in particular, I mean, Austin Widener could be a good two-way, but it's like, yeah, no, we want you we want you to play that physical style that you can play. But offensively, he's, he's a little bit better than that. So I almost wonder if we have two lines that are just built out of two ways, if that's the way to go. I mean, you could talk about you follow Anderson Dolan and Madden being made into a more offensive line. I mean, you follow can certainly be a playmaker. Hell, he could be a power forward if we wanted him to. Anderson Dolan could be a playmaker, a power forward, or a sniper. And Tyler Madden could easily be a playmaker or a sniper as well. So it's tough to necessarily want to change certain things up, but it could be done. It could be done, and I think it would benefit the team. I'm at least intrigued to see 
how the team would do, if that makes sense. You know, I think we're going to look for some drastic changes here. And I know we're winning, but the thing is, right, the team's good. We could be even better. And again, there's some people who consider this cheating technically, but again, there is nothing wrong uh, or nothing cheesy about being like, hey, this player, can you play like this? Happens in real life. Again, the example I will always go to is one John Tortorella telling the friggin' Sedines to play a more defensive, shot-blocking-oriented style. Not great. And of course, there are other examples of, you know, successful stories where it's like, hey, you know, maybe, maybe don't do this. Maybe don't try to be this player. Try to be this player. And then all of a sudden, oh, hey, this guy's really good. You know, crazy things like that can indeed happen. So, oh, yeah, you're gigantic, but you don't really play physically. Let's see what you can do if you try to hold onto the puck a little bit more. Oh, look at that. Suddenly you're okay. So, you know, again, I don't find it to be overly cheesy. I'm just hoping that despite these changes, it still kind of keeps the physicality. Even Austin Wagner, I'm going to change him to a two-way. I just hope that the physicality is still in his game. It's the one thing I really wish you could do, and it would be kind of franchise hockey manager style, where for every individual player, you can say, hey, be this aggressive. So like Austin Wagner, I could say, hey, you're a two-way, so obviously be defensively responsible, but I also want you to hit everything that moves. Whereas with, and actually here, let me uh, move over to follow really quickly, but whereas with Anze Kopitar, I could be like, hey, defensive first, eh, don't worry about hitting so much. You know, that would make sense, obviously. He's not the uh, most physical player in the world. So I am a little bit nervous about these changes. We'll see if it pays off. It might be a little bit too much tinkering, and maybe in terms of how you know, the game kind of chooses to reward or punish me based off of having three skill lines and a defensive line and no designated grind line as the game loves to have. You know, we'll see how it pays off, but this could make our power play uh, you know, even more deadly. We don't know exactly what the percentage is right now, but having some of these guys be you know, just a little bit more physical than they, or you know, a little bit more offensively gifted, I guess. Uh, could only help. Same for, you know, Hansa Kopitar. Again, Grinder never really suited him. Could have kept the other two on Grinders, just make Anze a two-way, and if this doesn't work, that's probably what we're going to do. I am at least intrigued to see what the chemistry is now for this team. Yeah, so it's down to a plus one. Which kind of sucks. But, you know, that's that's Okay. That's okay. Of course, they still show up as grinders for now. We'll see what happens as we move forward. Again, right now, though, we're still on pace to make the playoffs, which is great news. The top line is still doing well. The one thing I actually still need to check, though, is the defense and the goaltending, but I'm much happier with the offense. Clegg doing very well. Vince Dunn doing very well. Still without a goal this season, but happy with those numbers. Toby Bjorn has been okay. Again, we talked about do we want to move him off the power play. I think the answer to that is yes. I think Kale Clegg with his six goals. I mean, granted, Bjorn Fott has, has six goals as well. The attempt with Bjorn Fott was to try and get a little bit of a higher overall out of him before he turns 25. Nisimov still doing well. Marsh and Phillips have still been okay. How's the backup goal to anybody? Carter Hart's been great. Makanyemi hadn't played at all that entire month. So we still don't really know with him. It's kind of crazy that he didn't play throughout the entire month. We're going to leave everything as is. Let's keep simming. And again, hopefully Makanyemi gets some games here. I mean, I could make sure of it, but we'll see what happens. He has time, of course, in terms of finding a better backup. We can do that really up until the day of the deadline, if need be. Three straight wins to start the month, approaching 30 wins on the season, which is fantastic news. We beat the Canucks as well, but we are still behind the Sharks. My God. We don't play San Jose or Anaheim this entire month, which kind of sucks that we don't really have that featured game to look at. But thankfully, I mean, prior to the last two losses at least, we've had a really good run. Three straight losses, two of which were in regulation to end the month before we hit the All-Star break, but still 31-13-6. We are tied 
with the Sharks in points. Same amount of games played, but unfortunately they have the tiebreaker right now. A decent amount of separation on Vancouver. who are currently in third, so let's see what we're dealing with here again. Genther still over a point per game, which is great news. 46 points in 40 games. You have Alex Turcotte still crushing. He's nearly an assist per game. And Matt Savoy, 30 goals already, 54 points in 50 games. Second line, Carl Grundstrom still looking really, really good. Happy with his numbers. Rasmus Kapari really stepped it up. And Van Kadishen now at 28 and 23. You follow. I don't notice like a huge offensive boost for him or Anderson Dolan for that matter. I wonder exactly how those numbers have changed. Wagner, Kopitar, and Luff still just don't have it. Something is just off with that line, and it could be like, okay, you know, one line has to kind of struggle. It's certainly been their line. Bjornfot didn't do much offensively that month. I kind of want to see what Vince Dunn can do. I think I'm going to move Kale Clegg to that top power play unit. Then we're going to see what he can do. So I like Bjorn fought a lot. Actually, Toby is a lefty. Clegg is also a lefty, as is Vince Dunn. Okay. So that's not really going to factor in. But yeah, we're going to give Kale Clegg the opportunity on the power play and uh, could potentially go to Vince Dunn at some point this season as well. So we'll move out Bjorn fought for Clegg. And of course, Dunn does have the four on four time. How am I going to get out of this? How am I going to get out of this and get rid of that minus? How am I going to do it? Uh-oh. I don't know if I can. I I guess I technically can. I don't know if Van Kattishen or Grundstrom can play center. You know what? Okay. Four on four. You stay with Bjorn Fott. <laughs> Screw it. Easy enough. Goaltending. Makaniemi. You know what? Better. Two games, it didn't take much to change that around. I'll try to make sure that any double headers or back to backs that he gets the chance. I still, though, need to change something with that damn fourth line. And I think we are going to go back to Kopitar as a two way, of course. But I want to change the other two back to grinders. And of course, Matt Luff is the only guy that I can sub out. You know, if need, you know, if we need to really change something up there, I don't know who we would play. There's a chance of it being Corrali, but we're gonna change Wagner, you know, back to a grinder. We'll probably put Luff back in as a grinder as well, and we'll see if that gives us the changes that we need, like just some form of momentum for that fourth line. I do feel like Kopitar's offensive numbers went up. I don't recall exactly what they were, but. We'll see if that pays off for us. One can only hope at this stage after, again, a pretty slow start. But like I said, if one line is struggling, it's a, it's a pretty good sign if the rest of the team is doing well. So we will continue onward, still barreling down the back half of the season, trying to catch San Jose. We play Anaheim and San Jose in the same week. So let's see what happens here in February. As there has been a trade, I'm guessing that's Adam Brooks and uh, Grant Mismash for Forrest Ward and probably Tyler Myers. So that's good. We lose 7-5 to to Chicago. I don't know why I'm guessing it was so difficult to say, but what are you going to do? Uh, we beat Winnipeg as well, and Anaheim, we win! Finally, we got a win over a fellow Californian team. Now we really need to beat the Sharks as well. We play them twice this month. Play Vegas as well, lose 2-1. to one. The Blues have fired their head coach. We get destroyed by the Sharks. Jesus. So we're down now to one and four on the season. Uh, nearly no hope that we're going to be able to match the uh, the winning record against the California team now. As Tyler Madden goes down to injury, he'll be out for a week. We did beat Edmonton in that game though. Play Vegas again. Luats to Ryan and then Fedorov for Kubalik and Entwistle. Damn. It's a big trade. Vegas, we got another one, the Yanmark and a third for Gianni Kovacevic in a second. We did end up beating Vegas as well. Vancouver, this could be important. The Canucks are right in the mix for this playoffs. Well, it's not just us in San Jose at the top. As the voice nearly gave out, we're making the best of it. We're still going for it. How's that line doing? 
I feel like that third line struggled a little bit more. Oh my god. Okay. We... Oh boy. I mean, Matt Luff hasn't necessarily been the worst option on that line, but that line's just not clicking. That line is just not clicking. And the problem is, we don't really have much time for them to get it going. Corrali does fit in on the fourth line if need be. For Horkins there as well in case of injury. Who's in the AHL? Is there just somebody kind of built into this roster? Albrecht at a 77, not overly physical. Yuha Curry is an incredibly physical player. So that is someone to look at. There's also Topi Mikola, who absolutely not. And then, of course, Brett Leeson's there, as is Chris Wagner and Anders Lee, for that matter. Right. I mean, Curry could get the call up. I just don't know why that fourth line's not clicking. But, you know, if we only have to worry about the fourth line, I guess it's not a, a bad sign here. Defensively, Clegg still looking good. Dunn still looking good. Bjorn Fontan and Isimov looking good. I don't really have an issue with the defense. And again, we have people in the system that we could give a shot to. Spence, Patrick, Dursey, Van Allen. If that third pairing kind of struggles. And a goaltending wise, Hart looking good. I don't think Etu Makaniemi's the guy, though. I don't. So I'm probably going to look for a goaltender here. As we do beat the Canucks. Probably going to look for a goaltender, and there might have to be something done about that fourth line. As it stands right now, though, we're looking good. We play San Jose again. We really need to win that game, or we are completely screwed in terms of uh, winning that one goal for the season against other Californian teams. California teams. So let's see. Top goaltenders right now. Who do we have? It's it's Besser, Petterson leading the way. It's Lafreniere with, again, the New York Islanders. So goalie-wise, Carter Hart right now looking pretty good. Nikolai Ulanov, who's a minor league starter at 19. I mean, he's going to be way too expensive. He was a first-round uh, first pick. Georgiev, backup, one-year deal. Georgiev could work. That just goes to show that who we have in the system might also work, though. Kalanos. Brandon Kalanos on the Habs. And then Askarov, Hellebuck. I mean, I think it's got to be Kalanos or Georgiev. So Montreal and Calgary are the teams to look at here. Calgary, I mean, of course, I'd rather make the deal with Montreal. Just for the fact that, you know, not in the same division. Which is helpful. So I don't exactly want to trade Kalanos... I don't know how much of a goalie for the future he is, though. But Mark Niemi's clearly not it. So, say I send you a goaltender. Right? I send you a goalie. Make it worth your while to take on someone who's not really getting it done. I really don't want to get rid of Austin Wagner. But man, his struggles this season. They're tough to overlook right now. They really are. Hmm. Obviously, I don't necessarily want to get rid of Matt Luff right now either, but he's the one guy we can get rid of. If I don't get rid of Wagner, you know, I, I have to get rid of uh, have to get rid of Matt Luff on that line, which you know, kind of sucks, but it'd be what it is. I mean, that again, that fourth line just is not clicking, and the aftermath of losing Mike Amadio. I have to move a third round pick here anyway. I don't know if now's the time. What if I give up a fourth? So basically, hey, swap me, you know, a struggling goalie, but you get a fourth round pick for a dude. You guys aren't really a playoff team. What do you think? Rejected. Damn. Okay. Uh, well, here, how about a third? Could take Toronto's. Will that work? Yes, it will. Sweet proposal. All right, cool. So we pick up one of the better backup goalies. This season thus far, don't really know how good he is aside from the fact he's a backup. And if he can't get it done, then Twilmina gets a chance. It's pretty much what we're looking at. But give up a third round pick to get that deal done. And then forward-wise, I think we're still 
We're still good, but now it's just a question of like, okay, is Sean Corrali the guy, or do I give Yuha Curry the chance on the fourth line? He's doing very well in the AHL. He does take a lot of penalties, though, despite 86 discipline, just because. But I wonder how well he'd benefit. He really doesn't fit in on our second line. I wonder how well he'd benefit from playing alongside Anze Kopitar. You know, in one of Kopitar's final seasons. Again, Matt Luff doesn't exactly deserve to get bumped here. And Austin Wagner is playing himself out of a contract right now. Wagner does work very well together, though, with Sean Corrali. So again, right now, Austin Wagner is potentially losing himself some money by struggling as much as he is, at least defensively. I think we're going to try Corrali on that fourth line. I really don't know what the hell to do with Anze. I want to keep him on the team, but he really doesn't fit where we're trying to play him. Like He's better offensively you know, still than who he's playing with on that fourth line, but we just don't have that role for him, at least not at the moment. So that kind of sucks. But what we're going to do, again, Matt Luff didn't even want to re-sign here. I mean, he's doing better than Wagner, that's for sure. But I'd prefer to keep Wagner full-time because he was at least loyal to the team in terms of wanting to stick around. So we're going to see how well Sean Corrali can work on that line. And there's a couple of other uh, player-type moves that I want to make here. So let's see what we can set up. Hopefully the deal from Makaniemi sending him to Montreal kind of sorts things out there. But I do think that's our only real area of complaint. I'm happy with the top nine and the depth that we've built up. I'm, you know, a little bit disappointed in the fourth line, but they can easily fix it and turn it around. And I'm happy with, uh, you know, the backup goal hitting situation now because at the end of the day, Carter Hart's doing well. If Carter Hart goes down, yeah, we're going to struggle pretty much no matter what. But, you know, we, we've seen other teams do well in terms of the backup goaltending situation despite not having the highest overall guy in the world. So I don't uh, I don't fear too much for the situation that we're in. So I want to change Madden, Iofalo, and Anderson Dolan back because I really don't feel like it's benefited them that well from the switch to being more skilled. So I'm going to change that back. Iofalo with a... Letter of the season. I follow, you follow, call him what you will. But we'll make that change there. Per Horkin's still good where he is. And center wise, let's change Anderson Dolan back. I might just make Kopitar a grinder again because I know it's going to give that line a plus five. It really didn't do much uh, for them last time. But I, I don't know what the answer is. You know, we got to try some different things to get the team going a little bit more. So, Anze, congratulations. You're going to be a grinder again. Let's hope you can make it work, buddy. I mean, because I have to play you. I'm keeping you on this team. You're our captain. You know, you're not going anywhere. It's just you are no longer our top center, uh, you know, obviously. So, Sean Corrali, former Sharks prospect, becomes a Bruins prospect, solid fourth liner. And uh, instead of playing center, of course, we're going to have Kopitar there, so we will see what Corrali can do. I guess there is somewhat of an argument of like, hey, do you trade like a Tyler Madden? Bump up Kopitar to the third line, but I don't think that's worth it. I'm just saying the discussion could have been had. So let's hope our backup situation is improved. Aside from that, just can the fourth line get going? That's all I'm asking for. Can the fourth line get going, and can that third uh, defense pair still stand tall? So we'll see what happens here. Again, another crucial game coming up against the Sharks, but as it stands, our roster's set. If this team can't get it done, so be it. But we'll see what happens here. Again, a loss to the Sharks would be extremely detrimental on multiple different levels. Alex Tuck traded to Columbus. He was up to a 90. Uh, Bohinski goes down in the AHL. Alex True is on waivers. He's a minor league checking forward. Six points in 14 games for the Sharks. 
I mean, we've used him before. There was really no reason to not claim him on an expiring deal. I will, uh, I'll take him, or maybe not on the Sharks, but on Columbus. We do beat Columbus as well, and San Jose, we win. Okay. It's a big win against the Sharks, so if I'm not mistaken, and we'll recap here, we are 1-2 and two against both the Ducks and the Sharks. There you see the first loss to the Ducks. We did not play anybody else there from there. Played nobody in November. December, we lost to the Ducks as well, so that's 0-2. We didn't play the Sharks for a long time. As frustrating as that is, but then that's 0-1. for 1. Actually, no, wait, where is that other Sharks matchup? I know we played them in here somewhere. I missed it. I know I did. I know I did. San Jose, where are you? I have us at 1-2, and, and I can't be wrong. Chat will rip me apart. What the hell? Are we all, Did we only play San Jose once? Anaheim, 0-1. Looking. Okay, I'm not, I'm not totally blind, am I? There you are. San Jose, 0-1. And, and then we go over here, Anaheim, 0-2. And, and then we go over here. So Anaheim, 1-2. and two. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so 1-2 and two against each. 40 wins on deadline day. We are currently in sole possession of first place in the division. Again, a neck-and-neck -neck battle with the Sharks. This team is going to stay the same. We have the talent to change things up if need be, but I'm obviously extremely happy with the top line, extremely happy with the second line. 30 goals now for Van Kattishen. Extremely happy with the third line. And, you know, the fourth line, I mean... At the very least, the question's going to be raised, should Austin Wagner come back? Is it just that he and Anze Kopitar really don't gel? Corrali hasn't been great so far either. I think the biggest issue here is that Anze just doesn't fit in with this team. If he was a depth forward, I'd scratch him. But in terms of where we're asking him to play, it just doesn't work. Because we know Austin Wagner can do extremely well, you know, like when he played next to Mike Amadio. I mean, look at this. What's the difference? Luff was still there. It's just he doesn't gel well with Kopitar. I mean, unless we're just suddenly having worse luck, and again, someone has to get scored on. Sven's so Dunn finally scored a goal. I mean, defensively, I'm extremely happy with these numbers. Goalie-wise, Hart's doing well. How's uh, Brandon Colanos doing? 947 save percentage in his first game as a king. It's just the fourth line. I can't help but wonder how this team would do without Kopitar. Even if it's Wagner, Corrali, Luff. How does that fourth line look? You know? How does that fourth line look? I mean, it's back to a plus five. But trading Anze Kopitar, especially when we're in a playoff spot, is sacrilegious. I mean, again, if he was a depth forward, he'd be the perfect guy to be like, okay, if there's an injury, Anze Kopitar replaces them in the top nine. If it's, you know, an injury to the bottom six, uh, a grinder steps in. I just don't know what I want to do with Kopitar. I am intrigued, though at what a potential return could be. I don't want to get rid of him. Trading our captain right now is probably not a smart move in terms of morale. But damn that fourth line. Because the only way I see it is like, okay, we go with a more skill-based fourth line, or at least a bit more defensively responsible, but Kopitar does not mix well with Austin Wagner, and it's really costing us here. As we do have offers for Anze. Chris Kreider, obviously, just he's not going to fit in with the team either. Not paying him that much money. We need to keep money free. Two fourth rounders appears to be the going rate. Ugh. So if, if, if we wanted to keep Kopitar, I feel like Wagner has to go. And it's easy to get rid of a fourth liner at this point. Because, again, you could talk about playing Kopitar 
uh, with Luff and Corrali. You could try Perhorkin. You could try Alex True and Curry. I mean, again, we still don't even know how good Alex True is. I forgot to put him in the lineup. Fogamo is there. Shafagulian. I mean, you know, we don't have to have a fourth line grind line, but if we're keeping Kopitar, Wagner has to go. He just really does. Because that fourth line has been brutal. But if we look at expiring contracts, of course, I mean, we have some money to pay out anyway. $41 million. But Turcotte needs a deal. Genther, Savoy. We have to decide on whether or not we're bringing back Vince Dunn, which I assume we are. Van Kaddishen's here. Uh, but then Kopitar, right? His next contract, he's not looking for much. Austin Wagner... Actually, not looking for much. It's like he knows he cost himself some money. <sighs> Damn. Every single player is willing to come back. And I should have handled some of these negotiations a bit sooner, but it is what it is. And then Kalanos might even prove to be worthy of our backup goaltending spot next year. We can just let the fourth line be what it is. We can move Wagner. Or we can move Kopitar. I want to try to keep on Zay, but we we got to figure something out here because that fourth line is a very obvious blemish against this team right now. It either needs to be a bit more skill-based surrounding Anze, or it goes to a full-on grind line with Wagner staying. Those are the options. Everything else about this team I'm perfectly happy with. Extremely happy with, in fact. I love our team right now. The top nine's fantastic. The defense, you know, questionable moves, but Vince Dunn and Kale Clegg have been a fantastic pairing. And again, Carter Hart has been the goalie that we needed him to be. We brought in the backup who's done very well. We have depth, uh, both in terms of healthy scratches and guys down in the AHL. It's just, what do we do? What direction do we bring? That one very obvious blemish, you know, how do we go about solving it? So I am going to call things here because I want to know your opinion. Next episode, we go back through, we finish the regular season, and more than likely, depending on the length of the episode, we'll go through the first round of the playoffs as well. So I thank you guys very much for watching. Of course, uh, going to be very intrigued to see how things go down as well uh, in terms of the challenges for the season. Taking a look here, we play Anaheim and San Jose. Anaheim twice, San Jose once. We'd have to win all three of those games to be over 500. If we hit 500 on that goal, actually it's impossible for us to hit 500 on that goal. Yeah, I mean, it would be one and two. Yeah, it's possible for us to hit 500, so we're going to see what happens there. Point being, thank you for watching. I love you all. Check out everything in the description. A shout out to my patrons on Patreon. I love you. I will see all of you in the next one where we're going to find out, it appears at this rate, whether or not the Kings can finally make it out of the first round.